And first up is our very own Shravani Allah. Um, she is, um, has been, she's been blessed to have been born into a spiritual family and has been a Sai devotee since a very young age. She attended and graduated from the Glendale SSC program and is currently a fourth year medical student studying medicine at the Western University of Health Services. And she is going to take on so many more roles for us as a YA. We are thrilled to have her share her story. I offer my most humble pranams at the divine lotus feet of our beautiful Swami. Respected elders, brothers and sisters, Siam to all of you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Shravani and I'm from Region 8. I'm so fortunate to be able to say that I grew up in a family where Swami was very much the focal point of our entire life from when I was a child. And I'm so fortunate to have been able to attend the Arcadia Sai Center in Glendale SSC. And today I'm so grateful to have this opportunity to share a few words with all of you on this beautiful occasion of Aradhana Day. And I'm even more grateful to do so in the presence of so many of the people that I look up to most in my life as true examples of Swami's love and Swami's service. Today, I would like to take just a few minutes to talk about Swami's presence that he's had in my life so far and the impact that it's had to lead me to strengthen that foundation of faith to believe that he's always truly with me and that he's omnipresent. In 2007, I was given the opportunity to be a part of the regional Christmas play. And you know, Swami always says, you take one step towards me and I'll take a hundred steps towards you. And I feel like this was the first moment in my life where I really was able to see that come together. For countless months leading up to Christmas, all of the kids, all of our parents, all of our teachers, we worked tirelessly to make this play that revolved around the story of the birth of baby Jesus so immaculately perfect so that we could offer it to Swami as our love and our devotion to him. And so I even remember a few families used to drive from San Diego to Glendale every weekend over the course of months to make this happen. And so as the time approached, as Christmas grew closer and we went to Parthi, Swami blessed us so much that trip by not only allowing us to perform for him, but also he called each and every one of us children that were part of that play to him and gifted us with a chocolate gold coin. And if you ask any of us that were there during that trip, we'll all tell you that even though there were thousands and thousands of people in the hall, in the moment where we went up to Swami, it was just the two of us. He would look at us with so much love and so much happiness that it, would, it was just like, we were all so overwhelmed with emotion. And this, led us to have even more desire to grow closer to Swami. And in 2008, we were once again given the opportunity to put together another play for him. And this time, I was chosen to be one of the girls who would go up to Swami and offer him a rose at the beginning of the play. And I remember as I walked up to Swami, and knelt in front of his chair and extended my arm with that one rose. Just looking at him and seeing the smile that he had on his face as he extended his arm to accept that rose. And even though there were no words exchanged in this, I truly feel in that moment that Swami had promised me that he was always going to be by my side for the rest of my life. And once again, Swami blessed us so tremendously by allowing us to perform this play for him. And after we had wrapped up the play, he came down to where we were, where we had performed, and he gave Padre Namaskar to each and every one of the children that was there. And he gifted all the girls with saris and all the boys with white clothes. And I remember on both of these occasions in 2007 and 2008, 
the night before our plays, Swami had given a divine discourse. And in both of those occasions, Swami had outlined what the synopsis of our play was going to be the next day. And I remember all of us kids just staring at each other in awe and not being able to believe that Swami had known what we were gonna do, that he had predicted the future. And I think this all led us to believe that all of the lessons that our Bhavikas teachers were teaching us, that Swami is all knowing and that he's always with us was actually true. And though I grew up in California and have only seen Swami a very small handful of times, it was these experiences that, connect, that built that connection and that desire to always remain close to him and to start to build that faith that he was always with us. And as I grew older and as Swami left his physical presence, it was those moments that allowed me to have that confidence that no matter what happened, his hand was always going to be in our lives. Today, I wanted to take just two examples of the times that I have felt his presence so tremendously in my life. The first one was my senior year of high school. It's a time where all of us are slightly confused because we don't know where we want to go for college. And for me, I didn't know with where I was applying or where I wanted to be was necessarily where Swami had wanted me to be. And so I remember having conversations with my parents and my teachers and my friends, but this confusion always was just in my mind. Like, how do I know, Swami, that you want me to be where I am? And so I came to realize that the only way was for me to get that answer from Swami. I needed to have that answer from Swami to clear that con confusion. So I started talking to him over the period of weeks, Swami, tell me where you want me to go. Because I wanted to be 100% sure of the fact that wherever I ended up was where he wanted me to be. And a few weeks later, I had a dream. And in this dream, my parents and I were all sitting in our home at our altar, looking up at Swami's, Swami's picture and I was holding a brown envelope in my hand. And as I opened the envelope and pulled out this piece of paper, it had said, congratulations on your acceptance to Nova Southeastern University. And when I woke up, I remember being very confused because I had never heard of this college. I didn't know if it existed. And so I did my quick little Google search and not only did it exist, but it had everything that I wanted in a college, including a very strong pre-medical curriculum job opportunities, research opportunities. And now as I look back at my experience through undergrad, I come to realize that it was the biggest blessing that I could have had in my life because of the tremendous amount of learning that I was able to do while I was there. The second example happened not too long ago. I've always known that I've wanted to work with children in some capacity because I feel like they're the truest examples of Swami's divine love. And I feel like I'm able to feel their presence, feel Swami's presence so greatly whenever I'm around children. And so one night, one of our family friends had come over to dinner and she had started talking to me about some of the experiences that she had with Swami and some of the experiences that she had as an SSE teacher in South Africa. And I remember being so touched by everything that she was telling me. And I said to her, I hope one day that I can have the opportunity that you have to be able to work with these children and feel Swami's love and also have a positive impact on their life. And that conversation ended and I didn't really think much more of it. And a week went by and I got a call from Shivani Auntie, who was one of my SSE teachers. And we started talking and she asked me if I would be willing to come in and speak to her girls about the impact that faith had in my life as a college student. And we talked about a few other things and to, towards the end of that conversation, she had asked me if I would want to teach SSE at the Glendale SSE Center. And up, up until that point, every time I have consciously felt Swami's 
presence, it was because I connected to him and asked him through my prayers. But this was the first time that I truly began to realize that Swami's not only listening to our prayers to him, but he's listening to every conversation that we're having. And it really just instilled this pillar of faith in his omnipresence. And now as I think back about what I can do every day to stay connected to him, to use him as that source of happiness and that source of love, I think back to the values I learned during SSE, the importance of tolerance, kindness, being non-judgmental, and seeing Swami in not only every one, but every situation that I'm faced with. And so it is my prayer to Swami that moving forth, I'm able to connect to him and plug into him as my source, to learn from the great examples of his love that I have been so fortunate to be surrounded with, and to always continue to build that faith that he will be there with me every step of the way as my best friend. Thank you, and Sairam.